Hey guys, thank you for tuning in to the Elevate with Erica podcast. I'm your host, Erica. I spent most of my life trying to do everything in the right order. You know, the things I was told would give me this great life, but it turned out not feeling so great. College, job, marriage, kids, I crushed that checklist. I made it to the point where there was nothing left to cross off, and I was stressed, living paycheck to paycheck, unfulfilled, tired, and I knew there had to be more to life than wishing away the week until Friday. I wasted some time feeling like something was wrong with me for wanting more, but that changed when I changed my circle. I surrounded myself with people who were proof there was more to life than the one I was living, and that's what I'm here to do for you and with you. Do you need inspiration to make big moves to create a life that gets you excited? Are you ready to elevate yourself past your fears? Then elevate with Erica. Grab a bottle and get comfy, friends. It's time for some unfiltered advice. Hey guys, I know a lot of you will be tuning into this on Labor Day, a day where we celebrate the contributions of our workforce. Did you know that this holiday was created to address people working long hours and not being able to take time off to enjoy themselves, to enjoy life? I think the meaning of this holiday gets confused, but it means so much to me. I've held the job where I put in too many hours because it was the only way I could get everything done I was expected to do and wasn't even compensated for overtime, and was expected to be happy with a week of personal time for an entire year. I've come home at the end of the day and mentally brought work home, given the worst of myself to my family, only to wake up and do it all again the next day. It was when I realized I was expected to do that for 30 years and retire hopefully in good enough health to be able to enjoy my life that I knew if I wanted something better, I had to make changes. You guys have heard me share my story before on prior episodes about how I left my government job to start my own business from home in June of 2020. I got tired of trading my time for money. Bottom line, I decided that my life was worth more than that rate per hour, especially because it was spent doing something I wasn't called to do. Now I'm doing something I love, and it's hard to actually make myself take time off. I hope you found a way to generate income that makes you feel that way too. But even when you love what you do, you have to take a day off. That's the meaning of this holiday that I think's been lost. Taking time to enjoy life, to put work down. I know not all of us have the luxury to do that today, and I appreciate all of the contributions you are making. If you can't take today, pick another day. But if you can, remember the point of this day and shut off anything that connects you to your daily grind. Don't get so lost in work that you forget to notice how beautiful this life is. Okay, enough of my Labor Day lecture. (laughs) Here's what I want to talk about with you today as we move into a busier season of life for a lot of us. It's sort of a great step two from last week's episode. So let's talk about taking care of you despite all obstacles. It's about making you a priority. Why is that so hard sometimes? I know I talked about this a little bit in episode 13, but I want to go even deeper today. I think especially for women too, we feel guilty when we put our needs above anything else. Like I would really like to get a shower, but I've got to fold that laundry. I would really like to work out, but my husband is going to want dinner at six. I would really like to watch something I want, but my husband will want the game on. I would really like to go for a walk, but my house needs vacuumed. Now let's reverse our thinking on those things and see how it sits. Wrinkled laundry is more important than me taking care of myself, my hygiene. My husband will wither away if he has to wait an extra 30 minutes so I can do something good for my health. My husband's wants are more important than mine. The crumbs on the floor are more important than that mental break I would get by taking a walk in nature. Doesn't that sound extra silly now? Yet I unconsciously, we unconsciously, make those choices all day. We don't even realize how far we've put ourselves down on the list of things that are important. Girl, you can restart that dryer and get them wrinkles out. Your husband can wait or cook something for himself. You deserve a little mental break in getting lost in your show, if that's what you enjoy. And those crumbs? Get a dog. He'll eat the crumbs, 
and now you have an extra reason to go for a walk. Problem solved. Seriously, though, I want to get more aware of the desires, wants, and needs I have that I'm not meeting. Let me pause here and say if you hear nature and birds chirping and our fountain running as I speak here today, it is because I'm sitting in my sunroom. It is gorgeous, sunny and 75 outside, and the vibe of this day is just giving me the inspiration to knock this episode out for you guys. So it's not up to someone else to make me happy, to know what I need. You wait around on that, you're going to be left awfully disappointed. You teach people how to take care of you by how you take care of yourself. And if you've put everyone else's needs before your own, that's exactly what they are going to do. They don't even know you have needs at this point, right? And that's our fault. As women, we got to start speaking up. And men, I know there are some of you out there that do the same thing. Give, give, give. But you know what? Sometimes you got to take. And it is not a bad thing. We don't need to feel guilty about it. But let me tell you, I struggle with it. I'm working on it and I have a long damn way to go. But I want to speak up more about what would make me happy. I want to stop silencing myself because it feels easier in the moment. You know something that's really helped me lately as I work on this? Affirmations. All right. Did you just roll your eyes at me? Seriously, words are powerful. The way we speak to ourselves is powerful. It's going to take some practice to start monitoring those unconscious thoughts that you're having, but we got to wake up. Pay attention to what you're saying to yourself every day. Pay attention to your choices throughout the day. And how many times are you silencing your desires to make someone else happy? Sometimes it's okay to do that. But I'm just saying I've spent years doing it and that is not okay. I have lost myself. I've taught people that I'm happy doing whatever they want to do. And you know what? That's actually not true. I know so many of you can relate to that. Living like that actually leaves you resentful and unappreciated. For you, for your mood, for the way you show up in the world, you have to start taking care of you too. Start each day with an affirmation. I actually use an app that sends me an affirmation for the day every day at 5.30 a.m. It's called I Am. There are plenty others, I'm sure. Or just say something to yourself that describes how you want to feel that day. I am worthy. I deserve to be happy. And my desires matter. I know it sounds like just words right now, but try it. We say a million negative things to ourselves without realizing it every day. We have to actively counteract that. Try this for a couple weeks. I know you will feel a shift. Then do one thing every single day that takes care of a desire, need, or want you have. One day, that may be a face mask. The next day, it may be sitting in silence for 15 minutes. Maybe it's turning on your favorite song and dancing. Maybe it's going for a walk. Maybe it's having a scoop of peanut butter. Maybe it's joining my virtual gym and working out with me every day for 30 minutes. Hint, hint. It's going to look different every day, but try it. Write down what it is every morning and don't let your life get so preoccupied taking care of everyone else that you can't find time to do one thing for yourself. Extra bonus, start sharing your new commitment to taking care of you on your social media and tag me every day if you want to as you make this shift. You never know who you will inspire to do the same. And can you imagine if we all stopped relying on outside sources to make us happy and we started doing that for ourselves? I think we'd all take a different version of ourselves out into the world every day. Imagine the impact. I have people come to my social media and see me sharing and posting things that bring me genuine joy. And you know what they do? They throw hate. I feel sorry for them. Why? Because I know that I'm a reminder for them of something they don't have, something they aren't doing for themselves, something they aren't willing to work for. I'm just a reminder of what they aren't. I'm human, but I do my best not to throw hate back Because I know that if someone can watch me dancing and taking care of my health and enjoying a cocktail and feel hate, they must be pretty unhappy with themselves. They must have had some pretty rough life experiences that created that mindset for them. And I think that's what can happen when we spend so much of our life trying to live to make everyone else happy or trying to live according to some standard we were taught is the right way. We get to a point where we are so miserable not being ourselves, not acting on our own desires, that we are just bitter and angry. 
I've done it. And being ourself is a form of self-care. It's up to you to create an environment in your life where you get to be unapologetically you. I didn't have that in the job I was in. I felt so incredibly outside of myself, like an out-of-body experience when I walked into that building. It was something that's hard to get someone else to understand. Trust me, I tried to get my husband to understand, and I think a year and a half in, he's finally understanding why I had to leave that job. I could have stayed there though, right? And a lot of people do. I could have stayed there to keep my husband happy, to not shake up my family's routine, to allow them to stay comfortable in the income stream they had gotten used to, even though I was miserable. See how I could have continued to put their desires above my own? But no, I got so unhappy that I said, you know what? We can make some sacrifices for mommy to be happy this time. Temporary sacrifices while I build a life for me and my family with a vision so big I know they don't even see it. So yes, I'm entertaining us with things that don't cost as much money. I'm bargain shopping, but surprise, I've been able to give my family something way more in exchange for those things. A happy, present mom and wife. Taking care of yourself is not selfish. It's necessary. And I think you'll find it's actually a benefit to all those around you, even if it makes them a little uncomfortable at first. Don't put their comfort before your own. I'm guilty of letting my good heart Leave me in situations that I know I'm better than. Leave me in relationships that I know I'm better than. Lead me to places and spaces in my life where I am so incredibly unhappy. In all of my past relationships, I have always put their needs before my own. Because I thought, number one, if they're happy, then I'm happy. Which isn't true. And number two, if I take care of all of their needs, maybe they'll want to take care of mine, which also isn't true. And like one of my most favorite motivational speakers said, uh, Trent Shelton, he said, we have to stop being loyal to the wrong things, to the wrong environments, to the wrong people. We have to stop expecting people to give us back what we're giving them, because that's going to leave us feeling unfulfilled and unhappy. We're not going to blossom living in a place like that. We're not going to blossom giving all our energy to everyone else. It's up to us to make ourselves happy, to be our own source of happiness, and to create an environment that supports that happiness. I want to learn how to be loyal to me. And like Trent says, it's up to you. Stop complaining about your life and take actions to change it. So again, as we are going into a busy time, maybe it's back to school or the holidays, whatever is happening in your life, you deserve, you need to take care of you. What's that look like for you? What can you give yourself today? If you're not already following me, on social media, you can find me on Instagram at Miss underscore Erica underscore Renee, where I always try and inject a little joy and inspiration into your every day. Would love to connect with you. Shoot me a message, say hi, and let me know that you've connected with my podcast. And don't forget to take time to rate this episode if you haven't done so already. It really helps get my podcast in front of more eyes and ears. All right, guys, raise your cups and let's cheers. Cheers to meeting our own needs, to no longer waiting on others to choose us, but instead we're choosing ourselves today. Until next episode, friends, E.